but the takeoff should be abrupt. Uh, I like to have a, a blocking of the free arm and leg to occur at 90 degrees. So when you hit that plant, and let's say you're a right-footed jumper, you hit that plant, we want that left knee to be driven at 90 degrees. We want to have that right arm blocked at 90 degrees as well. And it's almost like you, you bang your knee at the bottom of a, or at the table, you hit the bottom of the table with your knee and everything on top of the table bumps up. You know, we don't want to continue that phase. We want to hit that block, let that energy send us out. And then we start to get into our hang or our hitch technique. Um, at takeoff, the jumper should project out, not up or forward. Uh, this is kind of that hip displacement concept. So when we hit that board, uh, if it's your right foot, we want to really drive those hips, you know, all the way past that foot. We don't want to have our, our feet, our hips, and the next thing you know, we're, we're, we're taking off. You almost want to have your feet still planted and rolling forward, but then your hips are projecting out. So we're getting out into the pit. That bump from the penultimate step is going to get you to be up in the air. Um, but we don't want to feel like we're trying to jump up. We want to get out into the pit and hit that block. Um, proper front side mechanics of takeoff leg. You know, athlete uh, should amortize force from absorption to, propo to propulsion. Uh, essentially, this is that broomstick theory or hitting rigidity. Um, I, I kind of give a little demo to my athletes. I give a PVC pipe out and I say, you know, hey, you know, we want to be rigid just like this PVC pipe. We don't want to be, you know, like a cord of rope, for example, or string. You know, if I drop the string, um, you know, there, there's going to be no rigidity. You're going to break. You're going to buckle. Um, and it's, you're not going to get any return or response from the floor. But if I take that broomstick, it's rigid. I drop it. It's going to bounce up and have that initial return. So uh, that's what I'm kind of talking about with, you know, hitting rigidity. Um, flight mechanics while we're in the air. Um, you know, our goal is to slow rotation. Um, that's why we want to get as big as we possibly can uh, in order to make sure that we start to slow down, you know, our rotation while we're in midair. Um, you know, short levers uh, versus, uh, you know, fast, long levers uh, are slow. Uh, so it's that, that ice skater mentality or, you know, when a, a, a figure skater, you know, when they start to spin and their arms are out wide, the rotation slow, but the moment that they start to tuck, that's when they get faster. So the idea is that when we hit that takeoff, we want to get big, as big as we can, whether we're hanging, getting up as tall as we can, as long as we can, we want to slow that rotation down. If you're that jumper that gets to here and then we throw everything forward, you're going to end up rotating too soon. And no matter how much you get your knees up, you know, towards your face, you're already at an angle that's going to, to be, um, you know, not a great jump for you on when you enter into the sand. So we want to have long levers. We want to hit that board. We want to get as big as we can uh, to slow that rotation down. Um, uh, I say fit the hallway. Uh, that basically means that I don't want to be stretched out wide. I want to be thin. I want to be skinny. Imagine like you're trying to jump and you're in a narrow, tight hallway. We got to keep everything in a line and we want everything to go forward. We don't want to splay out here. You see, sometimes jumpers are kind of like star out. Um, and we don't want to do that. We want to be in nice and tight when we slow that rotation. Um, the sail versus the hang versus the hitch. Um, there is no, in my opinion, there's no better technique. Um, only what, you know, you know, slows rotation the best. Um, have I had, you know, you know, this is where you get into men and women, uh, you know, depending on, you know, if, if, if women should, should hitch or they should hang or they should sail. Um, in my opinion, it's all preference. I mean, technically, you know, when you're hitching, it's probably gonna, it's, it's a, it's a much more aggressive movement. So you want to make sure that you have enough hang time in the air to finish that hitch through. Um, but I've had, uh, both men and women's jumpers, you know, hit a, you know, a one and a half or two and a half type of hitch concept. Um, but all in all, to kind of break them down, you know, the sail technique is that we hold the drive knee position. We stay long with our hands up and then we get to what's called our leg shoot. Uh, that means that we're getting our knees up. We're going to squeeze the very end. We're going to get our chest down to our knees. We're going to shoot those legs out and we're going to get plucked into the, into the sand. So, uh, that's probably the basic, the most simple jump that you can have. Once you're, if you're a right foot jumper, your knee goes up, we hold it. We're going to fit through, uh, the hang, uh, that's where we're going to drive that free leg. So from a right foot jumper, I'm going to drive that knee. I'm going to hit that block. Uh, but then when I'm in midair, I'm going to drop that knee, drop my hands down. I'm going to get my, push my hips forward. I'm going to get as big as I can. I'm going to come around and I, I call it a, a reverse C. So you almost want to lead with your hips, get a big chest, keep that chin relatively down, you know, looking forward. And then we essentially bring everything through. We get our knees up and then we get into our leg shoot to pluck and pull into the sand. Um, the hitch, uh, the number, like I said, it's a two and a half, one and a half. It depends on the athlete. Um, 
you know, your arms and legs create big cycles. I like to, to teach a punch, punch, shoot. So if I'm a right foot jumper, um, I'm going to drive my left knee. I'm going to hit that block and immediately while I'm in midair, I'm going to punch that other knee, my right knee, and that's going to get to 90. And then I'm going to bring that right arm over the top and I'm going to be able to get my knees in front. And then I'm going to extend my feet out and get into that shoot. Um, I, I, I say to learn all three as coaches. So that way you can teach what comes natural to the athlete. Um, I, I like to teach the hitch. Um, I think it, it's, it's a, it's a great, you know, uh, position that you can, you can master. Um, but once again, I have, I've had, you know, multiple, you know, you know, national qualifying jumpers that hit, uh, that hit a hang, uh, um, our, our national champ, uh, long jumper for, for our ladies here, Lauren Wren, she was a sale technique. And then I've had multi, you know, national qualifiers, all Americans in the hitch as well. So, um, once again, it's, it's relatively preference. All right. The entry, um, I kind of said this before, it's, it's the most neglected, ne or sorry, neglected of the four priorities. Uh, yet it's the easiest skill to, de to develop in my opinion. Uh, you know, this isn't super taxing. You're not going to drain the athlete really learning the entry. Um, this is where you can really get as much out of that, that, uh, that jump as you can here. Um, it, it's not necessarily the most important, but it's where you can really start to have an athlete be more skillful in their jumps and you can start to see some massive payoff instead of just them just landing with their feet uh, like it's a broad jump. Or if they do kind of land, they just flail their body everywhere. There's actually a process and a technique to this. Um, you know, so I kind of, you know, try to teach it this way. You know, in the first phase, uh, we lead with the knees and then we deploy the shoot. Uh, this is uh, the chair drill here. Um, and I'll kind of break down a video on that to kind of show you. In the chair drill, you're just simply sitting, you're working on, you're already in a 90 degree position. So you're already in uh, the, the ability to deploy your shoot. And I mean the shoot, meaning we get everything through, getting that chest down, and that's going to help us get to that pluck and pull. Um, phase two, though, is, is that fit the window uh, during the leg shoot. You know, the knees will lead, the chest will drop, the eyes will stay up. We're going to try to squeeze as much as we can to get those feet out there. Uh, we don't want to be high up in our chest landing here. We want to make sure that we're getting everything forward when we, we, uh, we roll through into our, into our entry. So we want to get skinny is what I tell you. I tell people to squeeze. Um, you know, and the third phase is the, the pluck and pull. Now, once again, these are phases. This is me just breaking them down. This is all happening very quickly. Um, but of course, this is how you can kind of break those mechanics down and there's drill to show. But um, upon landing, you know, you're going to extend and you know, pluck your feet into the sand, heels first. Uh, so I don't want to be toes first. Um, the reason why is if my toes enter into the sand first and I try to like pluck and pull and get out of position, my toes are going to bury into the sand. I'm going to end up being behind. We want to get our heels into the sand first so then we can get our butt to replace our feet. And that way we can kick our feet out. If we go toes first, we're going to end up being behind, um, behind the mark that we want. Um, you know, I say quickly pull uh, or collapse or simply replace your butt into your, into your foot marks. Um, I use the Indiana Jones switcheroo, uh, you know, where uh, the, the golden, you know, totem that he finally gets to. He's got a bag of sand. He's got the, the golden totem and he immediately has to take the, the totem off and put the sand on. That's what I kind of say is a switcheroo. So I guess if your your feet are the totem and your your butt's the, the sand here, we want to pluck and replace as, as fast as we can. So, um, you know, I finally say to, to roll off the side uh, with hands up and elbows in. So we get that pluck and pull. Um, we don't want to put our hands back. So I tell them to keep your elbows in, your hands up, you know, uh, and that way you can roll off to the side once you've gotten that full pluck and pull. So, um, hopefully that kind of makes sense to you here. Uh, finally, just cues that I use, um, when we're, you know, when we are jumping, whether we're at meets or in practice, um, I'll say, you know, push out the back. Um, that is sim simply just means to keep the first six steps consistent on the runway. You know, I like to preach big arms, pushing through, being aggressive on your steps. Don't turn over, really get a good push and drive. Um, I'll say, you know, keep your head to the ceiling. Uh, this reminds jumpers to, to keep strong posture and high hips. Um, you know, that way you're not, you know, trying to stay low and loaded when you're running down the runway. We want to be up nice and tall. We want to be fast. We want to be loose. We want to be bouncy. Um, I've said this a thousand times already, probably. Uh, crowd the board. You know, this prevents reaching and it, it allows a reactive jump. should not feel forced. Uh, I tell jumpers that the best jump should almost feel easy. It feels like you're hitting the sweet spot. Uh, you know, when, if you're, you know, playing golf, if you're a baseball player, you know, when that, when that bat hits the ball, 
uh, club head hits the ball. Uh, you don't feel like you tow it. You don't feel a vibration. It just feels nice and smooth. It almost just coughs itself out. You know, it's, it's shocking to use physics instead of, you know, forcing yourself to positions. Um, uh, I, I say big punches, you know, this pr uh, promotes aggressive knee and arm drive, uh, blocking at takeoff. And I like to say, once again, for the hitch, I'm a punch, punch, and then I reach. You don't want to be, you know, twiddling your feet in midair if you're a hitch. Uh, we don't want to just have a little knee drive. We want to get to that 90 degree, hit that block, and then we get into big positions when we hang. Um, and then finally, like I said, when they're in midair, I'll remind athletes to squeeze. Uh, this is right before, en you know, entry. Uh, this reminds a jumper to fit through the window. Uh, before the pluck and pull into the sand. So uh, I like to make sure that I'm emphasizing knees first and then we get that extension.